Welcome, bitches, one and all, to my reaction to Season 3, Episode 4 of Elite Lou. Now, obviously, bit of a different setup than you are used to. I am future Harry. As for those of you who don't know, I had a major drive issue a few months ago, and it basically fucked with a load of my files, and one of them was the intro for this episode. The reaction is fine, the outro is fine, so don't worry about that. It was just the intro, because they're separate files. It's too hard to explain, but... It was basically just got fucked. <laughs> so yes, I'm having to re-record this, but it does give me a moment to talk to you guys because for those of you who have not seen the pinned post on the previous episode, I will not be doing season four and five of Elite on YouTube. They are both already done and complete over on my Patreon. So if you are interested and you do want to see those, then you can go over there, but I will not be doing them on YouTube. And the reason is Elite is a very demanding show editing wise because not only are they roughly about an hour long, maybe Maybe a bit less but you go know i mean they're a very long show they are very jam-packed for what they are as well and it just requires a lot of time to edit down and given that i'm trying to do more regular posts on youtube it's very hard to justify spending that much time on one show especially given that season four and five aren't as well received by the fandom so i might come back with them later on this isn't an absolute this isn't a i'm never going to do elite again because i will be doing season six again on patreon but for now youtube wise I will get to the end of season three and then I will leave it. So yeah, I'm sorry if that's disappointing for a few of you. I would genuinely, if I had the time, I would put every single episode I could but I just don't, unfortunately. I'm a one-man army, so yes. I hope that's okay with you guys. Now, this episode, I actually did really enjoy um, editing it because it's been a while since I looked back at season three and going through four and five and then coming back to this, it does truly speak to the quality of season three because I remembered that season three was really good and I remembered that I really enjoyed it and I still enjoyed four and five, don't get me wrong, but the quality just wasn't as good. This storyline is just, oh, I'm excited to get to the finale. But yes, with that said, I've rambled for long enough. So let's jump back in to the world of Elite. Buenos días. ¿Queréis un café, un té, unas tostadas de jamón con tomate? I feel like her mum's smart, smart enough to not leave stuff hanging around, though. Tranqui, que estoy bien. How are you going to be able to look her in the eye when you're the one who did it all? <laughs> Nunca me invitaron, bueno, ni a San Valentín ni, ni a nada. Yeah. Honestly, this guy, I just, it gives me the vibes of someone who, like, uses their past to manipulate people, but he doesn't realize that he's doing it. It seems like the kind of person who brings up their past a lot because it has haunted them and it was a very bad time in their life. But because they bring it up so much, it kind of makes people feel bad and want to do things with you and want to do things for you you know what i mean it just it feels like a form of manipulation to me it might not be intentional but that's how i take it and also i just him being so like you're gonna get the best flowers best restaurant duh, duh, it's like calm down sunshine don't need to flaunt it all oh look at them all reaching in their pockets immediately no es asunto mío, pero lo de la fiesta es porque no tienes dinero para organizarla, ¿no? Oh, my God. What? Nadia. Es asunto tuyo. Cariño. Nadia, lose the kind of person that you don't just bring something like that up to. <laughs> A ver, mira, que estás cabreada, yo lo entiendo. Pero te digo que yo salgo de aquí antes de que cante un gallo. Ya. Y hasta que el gallo cante, ¿de qué mierda digo yo? Exactly. You've left her in the shit. Rebe, pelea. No te dejes vencer. Excuse me, bitch. No need to talk to your daughter like that. ¿Os gustaría celebrar a todos juntos? El restaurante tiene una estrella Michelin. Oh, come on, that is amazing. Se nos va un poco de presupuesto. Invita a la casa. Los dueños son amigos de mi padre. Mama. Come on, come on, what an amazing birthday present. Come on. Pueden invitar a quien quieran, eh. Omar vendrá, ¿no? Oh, that's a that's a that's a oh, subject we don't bring up. You can say he'll always have a seat at your table, but you're not going to treat him fairly. You're not going to treat him like a good person because you will see his way of life as awful and not good for him. And you know, it's like all well and good that there's a seat at the table, when, but when it's full of such negativity, why would he want to take it? I don't know. It just angers me when they seem so upset that he left and upset that he is down this bad path when they're the ones who kicked him out. Oye, que con, con todo el lío este no me he dado cuenta, pero que no puedo volver a mi casa. 
Me puedo quedar a dormir aquí. Of course sí. you can. Oh, the fact that he is responsible for this is so awful, Samu. Eres la única persona que tengo ahora mismo. No pasa nada. Oh, oh no. I hate when people are taken advantage of in that way, where they don't realize that the person that they are going to for comfort is the reason for their discomfort. Podemos hablar un momento. Okay. Pero primero te vas a tener que limpiar la camisa. Oh, wow. Jodiste la vida, pendejo. Yo solo quiero hablar. Vengan a la fiesta. No pueden dejar que lo marginen así. Valerio, he has been accused of murdering the guy's sister. Es absurdo porque no vamos a ir los tres a una fiesta de San Valentín. Yeah, you can. ¿Y por qué no? A mí me gustan los dos. Oh. Valerio, no sé qué te habrán contado, pero lo que pasó entre Carla, Christian y yo no salió bien. Yeah, that time. Todo esto es una locura, ¿no? Es una hermosa locura. Again. See, this is my issue all the time. Again. Take the murder out. I am so fucking on board with this. This looks like such a cool trio to have. However, put the murder back in. No. Te voy a dar dos días para rehacer esto, porque si no 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 vas a conseguir entrar en el programa. Sé que lo puedes hacer mucho mejor. Okay. Oh shit. Al profesor se le ha debido de cavar la tinta del boli rojo con tu examen. Bueno, por lo menos toda una segunda oportunidad. Exactly. Ojalá pudiera aprovecharla. Mis padres están todas las tardes en rehabilitación. Oh yeah, with Omar going, she doesn't have a lot of time. ¿Qué tal? Ew. Es el cumpleaños de mamá. Le haría muy feliz que viniera. ¿Y a papá? Él también quiere verte, claro que sí. Yeah, but they may want to see him, but. Tampoco hay por qué sacar el tema, ¿no? Perdona, pero ¿tú qué pintas en todo esto? Oh God. Del restaurante y tal. Es mi novio. Oh shit! They're just outright saying it. Yo no puedo llevarla a cenar. No puedo hablar de él. No puedo decir que le quiero, porque mi felicidad hace infelices a nuestros padres. Exactly. ¿Tú te imaginas lo que es eso? No, verdad. Exactly. Buenos días. You can't think that it's as easy as it is, Nadia. Like this is the thing. It's like I don't blame Nadia or anything, but it's hard to explain to other people how it feels. That feeling of you trying to be happy, and it not be a negative thing. It's not like you being happy is in relation to murdering someone. You being happy is in relation to just being with the person that you like. Like, I don't, it's just so frustrating to see people so easily brush it off and just say that it's an easy thing. Just don't talk about him. You don't need to bring it up. Just come to dinner. Like, no, because then he's hiding such a huge part of himself and pretending like Ander doesn't exist. It's fucked up. Yusuf, nos vamos a la rehabilitación. Buenas. Ah. Uh um, what are you doing there? Her father didn't want to see you again. He venido a comprar espárragos. ¿Qué pasa, Malik? Hola, Nadia, ¿qué tal? Pensaba que estarías estudiando con la bronca que te echó el tutor esta mañana. No! You cheeky bastard. Nada, que no... No le he podido dedicar mucho tiempo al programa de Columbia. Trabajando aquí todas las tardes, no me da... Honestly, Guzman, I love you for that. Lo siento, hija. ¿Qué quieres que haga? No... No tengo a nadie más. Su hija está a punto de perder la oportunidad de su vida y usted no piensa hacer nada. ¡Guzmán! ¿Vas a decirme tú cómo trato a mi familia? Sí. Yes. No va a estar claro que me hace falta. Total, solo se le han ido dos hijos. I mean, I mean, he's right. He's definitely correct. But Jesus Christ, Guzmán, you came in with guns blazing, mate. ¿Qué solución me propone? Venga, busca alguien para la tienda. Mmm, cómo no se me había ocurrido. Lo que fácil es cuando tienes dinero, ¿eh? Si de verdad le preocupa el futuro de su hija, buscará la manera. Guzmán, por favor. Oh, my God. ¿Por qué no lo haces tú? ¿O lo de mancharse la ropita no va contigo? Hecho. Oh, shit. Nice. I'm actually in love with what Guzmán just did. Esto no te lo voy a perdonar en la puta vida. I know she's upset with him, but that's, that, in my opinion, is true love is you doing something that might risk the other person getting angry at you, but you do it because you know that it's what's best for them. Si el problema no es que no tenga ni para pagarte una birra, Samu. El problema es que no sé de qué cojones voy a vivir hasta que salga mi madre. Si es que sale, que sale. Sí, sí, que va a salir. It's giving me, I know it's not like the same level, but it's giving me the vibes of Polo being friends with Guzman after he had killed Medina. You can't do this to people. You can't pretend to be there for them. And then when you're the reason that they're sad. Rebe, si te pasa algo no me lo perdonaría en la vida. Samuel. 
Actually, my darling, it is his fault. Te admiro. En serio, tío. Vas con la verdad por delante y hace falta mucho valor para eso. I feel like Malik is right. Guys, come on. I'm pretty sure Malik is queer in some way. Let's be real. The way that he is responding to everything that Omar is doing and saying, it just, it really comes across as someone who is admiring his bravery because he doesn't have it himself. ¿Por qué te preocupas por mí? No me conoces de nada. Pues porque estoy enamorada de tu hermana y me flipa. In love with her? I don't think you're in love with her. How long has it been? It's been like a few days, surely. <laughs> no, you're not, cheeky bastard. <laughs> I love that they're both looking at Valerio. <laughs> oh. Pásatelo de puta madre. Si quiero que vayamos juntos, mal. Si voy solo, peor. Y si decido quedarme contigo, me tratas como una mierda. ¿Qué cojones quieres que haga, Anders? Que no me amargues el poco tiempo de vida que me queda. Es tanto pedir. Oh my god, Ander. Jesus Christ. I like. I'm not gonna be annoyed at Ander because I've never been in this situation. I don't know how I would react, but fucking hell. You. Because you want him to. I'd be positive about everything, but it's very hard to be positive when you've been told that the likelihood is you're going to die. But my god, this must be so hard for Omar to go through as well. Omar has put up with a lot of shit from Ander over the years, like before the cancer and everything. Ander has not exactly been the best boyfriend, let's be real. Just so it's just so hard to see Omar go through all of this with Ander. He treats him a he treats him like shit, let's be real. Oh, no, seeing all these couples. Um, yo creo que te tienes que relajar un poco, Omar. <gasps> ¿Por qué? Tú sabes lo que es tener a alguien en las buenas, en las malas, en las que están bien jodidas. Exactly. And that doesn't realize who he has. Like, you think when he was telling Guzman, when Omar was telling Guzman, it was purely out of love for Ander and wanting Ander to be happy. So it's just so aggravating to see Ander be so negative towards Omar. You can understand his feelings and negativity, but he shouldn't put that on Omar because he doesn't deserve it. Voy solo. Pero si veo a esos dos me doy la vuelta y me voy. Bonnie Clyde. No te preocupes, puse ratoneras por si se les ocurre. Oh my god, I love that. Pero creo que no es momento para dejarte solo en esta guerra. Hemos luchado juntos todo el tiempo, ¿no? Somos Luis Guzmán, ¿no? As friends, yeah. I think it would be nice if they both remain friends, but I don't know if Luke can handle that. Is that the broken bottle? Oh shit. Uh oh, what's gonna go on now? Has her mum been found like have they found drugs or something? Are they kicking her out? Y que a la puta calle, ¿no? Te ofrecemos la oportunidad de dejar el curso voluntariamente. Wow. Wow. Que se entere todo el puto colegio. ¿Cómo dices? Que se enteren hasta en la puta china que cuando al padre de un niño pijo le metieron en la cárcel no le dieron la patada. Yeah. Pero que si tus mamis pagan una beca y ponen pasta no te expulsaron que seas un puto asesino. Ande, entiendo. Que si se va ella me voy yo. Yo también. Oh, well done, guys. Well done. I love that so much. Intentaré hablar con el comité de dirección. De acuerdo. I love that so much. Well done, everyone. I know that it's not her fault. Like the headmistress has nothing to do with the actual kicking out. She's just the spokesperson, essentially. But to have all of them stick up for her is just beautiful to see. The problem is Samu did it out of guilt, not caring for her. He might care for her, but we all know guilt was the main motivation. Oh, he's going to help her break in. Okay. Shit. Oh, 
Okay. It's in the boxing bag. You smart bitch. You smart bitch. Wow. Is that cocaine? Wait. Are you being serious? She put it all in the boxing thing. Bloody hell. Exactly. Ew. I hate men like that. Look how good you'll look on my arm. Buying her gifts just, oh, I, honestly, I don't like men like this. They gross me out. Oh, shut up and fuck off. Honestly, this man. Can someone run him over? I've had enough already. Oh, shit, he actually turned up. Oh, look at the smile on his dad's face. This is the thing, like, I... I don't like when people have to hide things, but it's down to themselves. If Omar wants to hide Ander, hide the fact that he's with him, and he is happy with that, just have a relationship with his parents, then that's fine. It's a shit situation. It'll be much nicer if they were more open, but it's all down to whether Omar is happy with it. So if he is, then I'm on board. Exactly. You can't just go and sell this, Rebecca, and not... <sighs> oh my god, Valerio. I, this is such a bad idea, considering her mother's going down for drug selling. <laughs> like, And the fact that Sammy's working for the police and is now made fully aware that Rebecca has all of the drugs. ¿Qué tal los estudios? Hago lo que puedo, porque entre el curro y ayudar en casa no tengo mucho tiempo. ¿Y con quién vives ahora? Con I mean, yeah. ¿Y Andrés? Un amigo. Oh, for goodness sake. This is just so stressful. I hate that I keep pausing, but I need to, like, get my stress out in the pauses or else I would just get angry. It's just like, ah, uh, the jumping to, like, the a friend. Duh, duh, like, come on, please. Fucking annoying. ¿Y cómo está? I love that his mum is asking, though. Está bien. Not bringing it up, okay. Understandable. No me digas que nada porque te conozco. Nadia doesn't know as well. Que tiene leucemia. ¿Qué dices? Ander. Le acompaña su quimio. Estoy pendiente de él. Hijo, eres un chico muy bueno, pero... Esa no es tu obligación. Deja que le cuide su familia. But he is part of his family. Ander es mi familia. Yeah. Yep, nice one, Omar. Eres un chico muy listo y si te centras puedes conseguir lo que has oído. Me has oído tú a mí. He does not care what you think after you threw him out. Lo siento, pero no, no puedo. Lo siento, mamá. Yeah, you're ruining your own relationship with your son. You had this chance to try and mend it. And you fucked it up. Fucking annoying, honestly. Also, I find it so hilarious that Lou has got around the whole money thing by telling everyone to bring their own drinks. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, go off, love. That's amazing. It is a very, very smart idea, money-wise. Oh, well, damn. Uh, Malik, you are wearing way too much for this party. Time to strip off, boy. <laughs> Is it Carla and Yuri? Oh, God, she is getting drunk, drunk. That's not a good idea, Carla, but drink away the pain, I suppose. So we're finally seeing her. They're all lying, aren't they? Aren't they? They all know. Yes, I knew it. I, I honestly think they all know who killed him and they're all keeping quiet because they all, in some way, wanted him dead. Oh, shit. No, 
No. No. Oh god, I lose gonna see, but no, you're you're literally both in relationships. One to someone's sister. And Anders there. No, 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 no. Well done, Lou, for covering, but I'm very angry at Omar right now. Oh my god. Especially with what Anders going through. Problem is, he does understand Omar probably more than Ander does. And that's the issue. But oh, fuck's sake. I know that Omar didn't instigate the kiss, but he kept it going for a long time. Oye, que gracias por tu numerito. Funcionó. Eres un cabezota. Sí. Un orgulloso. También. Pero también un buen amigo. No lo hice para ser tu amigo, Nadia. Yep. Lo hice... Porque te quiero. Oh. ¿Tú me quieres a mí? ¿Tú me quieres? No es suficiente. Why not? Lo fácil que es todo con Melik. Nadia, you can't live your life as easy. El futuro que podría tener con él. Yeah, but right, this is the issue with this is why someone from an individualist culture has an issue with a collectivist culture mentality because my mind is so associated with a single person's happiness, with my own happiness. I would want myself to be happy in my own life more than anyone else because this is my life to live. So it's so hard to understand the mindset of someone from a collectivist culture because it doesn't make sense to me that you would sacrifice your own happiness to have your family happy because surely your family should be happy with your own happiness. You know what I mean? If you're happy, your family should be happy. Your concern should not be to make your family happy. That's how my mind is. That's how I've grown up. So it's so hard to understand and relate to. I just don't get it. Because every time she says something like this, I just think, well, why do you care about their happiness when you being unhappy is making them happy? Doesn't make sense to me, but I don't know. We'll see. Amor no basta. It is though, Nadia. It should be. That's the point. It should be enough. He venido a pedirte perdón. Y también a ver los exigues estás. No te rayes, no pasa nada. Oh shit. Y al único que trato como una mierda es a ti. No. Porque sé que haga lo que haga siempre vas a estar ahí. Y te empuje lo que te empuje, sé que vas a volver. Pero no es justo. No te lo mereces. I wish this was said before that kiss. Me perdonas. Oh. <laughs> I hope this doesn't eat Omar up inside. Cheating is never okay, but the way I see it, Ander treated him like absolute shit, and he had a moment of weakness where someone else kissed him. Samuel, Samuel, mírame, por favor. ¿Qué? Si tengo que elegir entre los billetes y tú, me dan por culo a toda esa mierda y lo tiro por el váter, pero ya no mito. Oh, love. I love her so much. Joder, pues si me ha quedado tan romántico, lo suyo sería, no sé, que nos diéramos como un beso. The problem is, I love her so much that I want what's best of her, and Sam is not what's best for her. Um, hola. Hola. Oh, this is awkward now. You've literally kissed your sister's boyfriend, Omar. Oh, I know it's more so that he kissed him, but Jesus Christ. This is so bad. This is so bad. Why are they having a little talk separate? Que, um, que ya me oh, I forgot. No te preocupes, estoy bien. Claro que me preocupo. Somos familia, ¿no? Oh. <laughs> Guys, I can't. I can't. That was so sweet. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Carla, you are not happy with him. Samu? For goodness sake. Rebecca does not deserve this, Samu. Please just end it. Is he gonna look at Omar? For fuck's sake! I love how Lou's just watching over all of this. Are they gonna get back together because of what Nadia said? Gracias. Bailamos. 
she was always good to Guzman. It's just she was never a good person, which was the problem. No. Sticking up for yourself. Estoy mejor así. Nice. When you can deal with being alone and you are happy with being alone and single, that is the true key to life. You can't always rely on other people. I love that growth on Lou. We haven't got a huge amount of growth for Lou because she's just been the same kind of bitter negative person the whole series, but I'm glad that we're finally starting to see some change. Rebecca, ¿tienes un momento? Here we go. What's the resolution? But. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, it's at that point where where there's nothing she can do. Interesting. Is it the club? The club that they go to? Oh my god. Is it the school? Are you kidding me? You're gonna deal in the school? And he's gonna use the thingy to blackmail her. Oh! <gasps> Oh shit. Oh Lou. Oh my god, she looks gone. Oh, she looks gone. Are we gonna get some tea? <gasps> oh my god. She had, oh, the problem is, Lou, you can't go back on that. She said it now. So she's going to have to tell them who, or she's going to be complicit in the murder. Oh my God, that's awful. That's actually awful. That was a fantastic episode for character growth and character revelations. Like, we got a lot of information on people. Now, let's start with Lou. The growth that we got from Lou this episode was really nice to see because I tried to say in the episode, but Lou doesn't get a lot of growth. She doesn't change a lot. She's always been very negative, very selfish, very self centered, and also obsessed with Guzman. And it was nice to finally see her let go of a lot of those things and let go of the idea that she needs other people to be happy because when you are happy in your own skin, when you are happy being alone, that's the true key to happiness in life because to always rely on other people, you've always got the chance that those people will leave or there will always be moments where you are alone. And if you are not comfortable being alone, you're going to have one awful life because you just, you need to, you need to be so comfortable being alone because people can't be there all the time. You can't expect people to be there all the time. It's one, not fair, and two, just does not work. So I love that we did get that growth. Now, her being blackmailed by Polo is very, very interesting because Lua sort of formed this bond with Guzman again, but it's more so friendship based and literally saying to him this episode, we're in this together. It's always us, Lou and Guzman. I'll hate them as much as you hate them. I'll be with you on that front. And now to have her being blackmailed again about her not having any money, it's got to the point now where she should just come out and say it. I know that that is so against her core character, so I don't expect her to do it, but she's allowing people to control her based on having this information that in reality won't really do much. Like if people find out that you haven't got an inheritance and you're going to make money yourself, like, is that going to change much? If people stop being friends with you because of that, then good riddance. You don't want those kind of friends. You don't want people around you who are just around you for your money. You want people around you because they like you. And I think that is her issue. She doesn't think that people like her because a lot of people don't because she's been a bitch. So I think that'll be a key part to her growth as a person is coming out with that truth because once you accept that people may not like you for this thing and you get those negative people out of your life and you actually start having positive friendships, friendships built on friendship and not money, then she's going to truly be happy. Now, moving on, let's talk about Polo, Valerio and Cayetana. I am very on board with this relationship. I know I keep saying it, but take the murder out. I'm very on board with it because it seems like a lot more healthy polyamorous relationship forming than between Christian, Carla, and Polo. Because 
between Christian Carla and Polo, Christian always felt like the side piece and also him and Polo were never really that into each other. The only time that we saw something between them was when Polo essentially blackmailed Christian into performing sexual acts on him to get on the cover of the magazine and then took it all back afterwards. It was more so that he was pressured into it and he didn't actually want to do it. So to actually see a three-way relationship where they all do seem to genuinely be attracted to each other. It's very cool. It's very interesting to have that. So I'm excited to see where that goes. But again, you had the murder. It makes me feel icky. I don't like it. I think Polo should be in jail, but I'm taking what we can get for now. Now, speaking of relationships that don't work, let's talk about Samu and Rebecca. I feel so bad for Rebecca. Samu is really just taking advantage of her at this point. He knows full well that the reason that her mother has been arrested is because he planted a listening device and they probably now have evidence against her that they can use, which is why they've arrested her. And he's still sitting with her with all of this knowledge of that. And he's sitting with her knowing that he likes Carla, knowing that he would rather be with Carla, which is just such a... Such a bad way to form a relationship when you know that you want to be with someone else. It's just so icky because it's not for any other person to have you liking someone else and potentially want to leave them in the future. Like if Carla becomes available and is like, Samu, let's get together. He's just going to leave Rebecca in the dust. Let's be real. So it's very sad to see this. And I hope that she gathers the strength to leave him. I know it's not her place to leave him. He should end it because he is the one aware of all the information, but... I hope that she does leave him eventually because I just, I want what's best for her and he is not what's best for her. Now, let's talk about the kiss between Malik and Omar. I I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest, because I've always said to myself that cheating on any level is very wrong, very bad, don't agree with it at all. And if it does happen, there should be honesty. So that's where I'm at right now. I think Omar should tell Ander just because it's needed. But in regards to the actual kiss... Malik initiated it, so I don't blame Omar on that front because Omar didn't go out to try and kiss Malik. He didn't go out to look to cheat. It was a in-the-moment kind of thing, and Omar was very upset and out of it, and so I don't really see it as Omar cheating on Ander because he likes Malik more. I think it was more so Omar was feeling really depressed about his family. He was feeling really depressed because Ander had been treating him like shit, and so he was kissed by this other man and he felt a level of comfort from having someone like him that he leaned into it and kept it going, which, uh, it's, it's wrong. I don't agree with it. He should tell Ander and deal with the consequences on that front, but I understand his mindset. I understand that it was just something that happened in the moment where he felt like a level of happiness that he wasn't getting from anyone else. Like his family were treating him like shit. Ander was treating him like shit. What more was he meant to do? So, even though it was a bad decision, I do understand it. Now, Ander apologizing afterwards was very cute and very needed, and it's very ugh, it's very sad that that happened after the kiss, because I'm sure it's going to be eating Omar up inside, and Ander doesn't deserve to be cheated on at all, but I don't think Omar deserves to have this feeling either, because Omar didn't initiate the kiss or anything, and also... And had been treating him like shit. It's just, it's so more complicated than simply Omar went and kissed someone, you know? So, I'm... Um, Hesitant to see where that goes. I hope that they can get past it if the truth does come out, but we'll see. Now, Omar standing up for Ander at dinner was so fucking beautiful. And again, that's a true sign of love. He does love Ander. He's his boyfriend and he loves him because he was sitting there in front of his family and his father was trying to say that he was his friend. And he was like, no, he's my boyfriend and I'm his family. He is my family. I'm going to support him. And when Nadia came along later on and said to Ander, I do care because you were family. Oh my God. That was incredible. That was actually incredible. But speaking of Nadia, Nadia and Malik should not be together. One, because I don't I don't know his sexuality. I'm not about to sit here and say that Malik is gay and he's lying to Nadia. But there's obviously something going on. And I don't know if I trust that he does like Nadia because they, they say that they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but we haven't seen a lot of them together. We haven't seen a lot of energy between them that matches well. We haven't seen them look like a couple, you know? It's weird to have them say that when we have never seen any evidence of them actually liking each other. But if he is gay, then it harkens back to when Nadia was saying before to her parents about when Omar's parents were trying to set him up with that girl and she 
sort of got in between and said that she was a bad person to get them to not think about the idea anymore because the girl did not deserve to be with Omar because he is gay and she deserves a better life than that. It's the same thing with Nadia. If Malik is gay and he's not bi or pan or any kind of sexuality that involves liking Nadia as well, then it's not fair on Nadia at all. But then again, it's not fair on him either because Nadia loves Guzman. She loves him. She has said that she loves him. They have both said to each other that they love each other. And Nadia saying that it wasn't enough was just so fucking sad to see. And I know I talked about it a lot, but I think it is just genuinely the difference of mentality towards an individualist and a collectivist culture because it's so hard for me to understand why you being happy won't make your family happy and why your family's happiness is more important to you it's just it's very weird to me because in my mind your family's happiness should come from you being happy your family should be happy that you are happy so if you're doing this because it's easier on them and makes them happier it's just it doesn't it doesn't work in my head i can't i don't think i'll ever understand it I can't understand the mindset. So to me, it just seems silly that she's giving up her own happiness for her family's. Now, let's move on to Uray and Carla. What the fuck is going on? What is going on? It genuinely feels like he is paying her to be with him. He's buying her all these gifts. He's, and I tried to mention it before, it definitely comes across like manipulation that he's buying her all these gifts. He's paying into her family and he's aware of it. He's saying that he's aware of it, yet he's still going through with it. It's very fucking clear that she doesn't like you, mate very clear that she doesn't want to be in a relationship. She's only doing this because her father wants her to, and her father is trying to get this business deal through. And watching Yure not want to dress up because he wants her to be his arm piece, just, ugh, it's gross. I hate stuff like that. Buying gifts for women, like beautiful dresses, getting them to dress up just so they can be on your arm and you show them off. It just, I know that for some people that can come across as nice because you're like, yay, show me off. But like, to me, it comes across like you're just a piece of clothing. You're just an accessory and it's gross. I've always hated that idea. And he seems to spend his money very willy nilly. He buys a lot of random shit and a lot of shit that he doesn't need. And it's definitely that idea of he's been thrown into this world of money coming from nothing and he's struggling to balance it all. And I do genuinely think that balance is his main issue. So I hope that he works on that because at the moment I do not like him. And finally, the drugs. Jesus Christ, what? how are they going to sell these drugs on school grounds? They are gonna get found out. We all know they're gonna get found out. There is no way that you can go about the school telling everyone about this business and selling to people. Yes, people will want it, but someone is either gonna blab, someone's gonna come forth with it. Maybe a drug inspection is gonna happen without them knowing and they're gonna find it in one of the lockers. I don't know, but shit's gonna go down and they're probably gonna get expelled. Let's be real. There's no way that they can do this business on school grounds and get away with it. But yes, with that said, I believe that covers everything. So on to question time. Right, first up, what are your thoughts on Omar and Malik? I mean, I think I made my thoughts perfectly clear. I like, I think that Omar shouldn't have done it, but Malik instigated it. Malik is the bad person in this because he is with Nadia. He's literally in a relationship with her and then he goes and kisses her brother. It's fucking dumb and it's fucking disgusting. So I'm very not okay with Malik right now. And Omar himself, he was kissed, but he lent into it. So he did want it. But like I was saying, I don't think it was that he wanted to kiss Malik. I think he was very upset and very out of it and he was feeling comfort from someone and he lent into the comfort rather than the person. I do genuinely think he loves Xander. So I'm not okay with what happened. 100% not. Nadia and Malik need to just end it right now, but I'm not angry at Omar because I do understand. Next up, rate all of the boys' outfits a lose party. Oh, that's a big one. Right, I need to write all their names down. So, people who are out of it and a zero are Malik and Yure. Both of them didn't follow the dress code, and if you don't follow the dress code, then I can't give you anything. But let's start at the top. I'm gonna go Omar. 10 out of 10. I agree. Alex himself said 10 out of 10, and I agree. Because that was just beautiful. The second he appeared on screen, I was like, oh, nice. And then Ander, I'd probably put Ander after Omar at a 9 out of 10. I'm going to combine Ander and Valerio, both 9 out of 10, because Valerio looked very, like, expensive, but still, like, nice. And then Ander just looked fit. So I'm definitely putting those two at second place. Now, third, probably Guzman. I really did enjoy Guzman. He looked really nice. And the reason that Guzman is above the next person, Samuel, is because Samuel... 
have we seen him in that before? I swear we've seen that in him before. But then even if we haven't, it's all about your attitude. And the other four came in with the right attitude. They were looking sexy. They knew they were sexy. They were working it. Whereas Samu came in looking very depressed, <laughs> very down and not wanting to be there. So it kind of like took away from the outfit as well. So probably gonna give Samuel, Samuel a six out of 10. Right, next up, what are your thoughts on Lewin Guzman, Carmuel, Omanda and Guznadia? Carmuel, how the fuck do you pronounce that? Is that right, Carmuel? But anyway, Lou and Guzman, I'm very happy with Lou's growth and wanting to get past the need to be with Guzman because that was always a focal point of her character and it was always something that angered me about her because I always used to say, why do you need this man who clearly doesn't love you to make you happy? It's so frustrating to see from someone. So I'm very happy that she got past that. Now, Carmuel, I've never been okay with it. I've never been happy with it. As time has gone on, I've come to accept it. I'm not angry with the coupling because they do seem to like each other. And we've seen Carla go through a lot of shit with her dad that I don't blame her as much for how she handled the situation. So I'm okay with them being together. In terms of them being a couple, I do want it simply because I want Samuel to break up with Rebecca. I don't think she deserves this. I don't think she deserves to be lied to about one, his feelings, and two, the fact that he took down her mother and her source of income. So... That's why I'm very much on board with that coupling. Now, Amanda, I do really love them. I've always loved them together. I hope that this kiss and this cheating scandal doesn't break them apart and doesn't make them break up, especially with what Anna's going through. Like, Anna is going through leukemia. He's going through chemotherapy. He does not need this added on as well. So I hope that they can get past this. I don't know if Omar should tell him the truth. I've always been a person who says that people should tell the truth no matter what. And while I do still agree with that, with everything that is going on with Ander right now, I don't know if it's the right decision, to be honest. I really don't. Now, because Nadia, again, I've made myself very clear, they need to be together. Especially when the person that Nadia is with has just kissed her brother. Like, no, Nadia, you can't just do what is good for your family. You both love each other. You saying it's not enough is absolute bullshit. It's always enough for your happiness. It's not enough for your parents' happiness, but it's enough for you. And... Also, the disrespect that Guzman showed to her dad this episode, I think should not be shown as disrespect to the father. He did not say this to disrespect her dad. He said this because he obviously cares about Nadia a lot more than Malik does. And I think that her father needs to see that and get past his own pride and understand that all of that was frustration coming from Guzman's side saying that you need to do more to help your daughter. Because evidently two children have already run away because of how the father treats them. But anyway, moving on, what are your thoughts on how Rebecca was treated by the school? Fucking disgusting. I'm not surprised because as soon as she said that it was the, what was it, the parents union or the parents council? I don't know, but as soon as she said it was to do with the parents, I was like, of course, of course, it's the rich parents not wanting to bring the school's name down. It's fucking annoying when you think that Guzman's dad has gone through all of that. Nothing was mentioned. Polo's whole scandal, nothing was mentioned. The only reason that Polo was told to maybe not be at the school was for his own safety. It wasn't because it was bringing the reputation down. It's fucking annoying that people have these mindsets. And the fact that they've like schemed behind her back and thought, you know what, let's let her in. But because she's in prison, she won't have any money to pay for it. It's like, oh. I hate it so much, but I'm 100% not surprised it was a parents' union. Next up, what are your thoughts on Omar? Because my mind with him this season is conflicted. Yes, that is exactly me. Like, it's the fact that I, I've i always said that I don't like cheating and all of that. And that's why I'm so at a conflicted point of view right now, because I don't agree with it. I don't like what happened. He lent into it. It wasn't he was kissed and pulled away and all of that. He lent into it and he did it. But he was so very hurt by Ander and his family that it felt more like an emotional outburst than a wanting to cheat. So I just, I don't know. I'm loving Omar, but ugh, it's just such an icky situation. That Conflicted. That's, that's my feelings. I'm conflicted. And finally, what are your thoughts on Lou this episode? Oh, I'm glad that I'm ending it on this because I, and the person that commented did leave a paragraph below that I did read. And I do 100% agree that this is the point that I am also starting to change my view of Lou because I heard people talk before that they really like Lou. And I was just sitting back like, I get that in time people's opinions on characters change, but I got all the way through season two and I was just like, I still hate her. Like she's still just such a bitch. And so scheming and so rude to everyone. But I think that this whole idea of having her inheritance taken away from her and having to deal with the consequences of feeling like 
Samu and Nadia, essentially, where you have to get these scholarships to make it through in life. I think it is truly starting to change her and it's starting to change who she is as a person. And also her breaking up with Guzman has definitely changed her as well because it's sort of put her in a position now where she truly is on her own. She's got no one supporting her. She hasn't got Guzman. She hasn't got her dad's money. She's got nothing. And I think that when you are at your lowest point, you are always open to the greatest change in your life. Like you are always at that point going to change your perspective, going to change how you deal with people, how you approach everyday things. And it's definitely starting to see a shift in her character. It was the first time that we've genuinely seen her happy. And the fact that Lou covered for Omar and Malik, even though I don't like that that happened, the fact that she didn't want the drama, she didn't want to be a mean bitch and be like, Anda, go in there. She actually covered for him and didn't want any drama and anything bad to happen to Omar because she cared about him. And that's just, that's such growth for Lou. And I genuinely am starting to love the change in her character. And I hope that it continues because what, we're halfway through. And also speaking of Lou, the end of the episode when we saw her in the future, that is a Lou that I have never seen before. That is a scared Lou. And we don't often see Lou scared. She puts on this very big wall that she is this strong person. And even when confronted by Polo before, you saw a bit of the wall crack, but you didn't see it crack fully. Whereas that, the wall was down. She was gone. And for the actress, well done, because she portrayed that so well. Like if you saw someone get murdered and you know who did it, that is the reaction that you would have. And I love that she portrayed it that well. So those are my opinions on Lou. I l have hated her up until this point, but this change is definitely positive and I'm excited to see where it goes. But yes, for now, thank you very much for watching. I have left a link down below to my Patreon. We're able to find the early and uncut reactions to Elite and all the other shows that I do. I've also left a link to my Twitch and Discord, so be sure to follow them if you are interested. And yes, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.